Ascent is Celebrity's newest ship and we're joining its transatlantic cruise from Fort Lauderdale to Barcelona. But first we have two nights in Fort Lauderdale to recover from our long flight on Virgin Atlantic from Heathrow to Miami. We stayed in the Marriott Courtyard, a fairly basic hotel but perfectly placed for Fort Lauderdale Beach. We used Uber to get around and we visited the Galleria Mall where various acts of shopping were committed. In the evening we had a very pleasant meal at the Café Ibiza. And if we thought Café Ibiza was loud, it was nothing like this. In the morning, through our hotel window, we can just about see Celebrity Ascent. And before 11 o'clock, we're checked in and are waiting in the Retreat Class Lounge at the cruise terminal. We don't have to wait very long before a butler comes and escorts us on board and we can make our own way to our cabin. 8214 is a magic carpet sky suite. It's called a Magic Carpet Suite because it sits within the track of the Magic Carpet. This is a room which can move up and down on the outside of the ship between Deck 2 and Deck 16. On Deck 2 it's a tender embarkation platform. On the other decks a bar and sometimes a restaurant. Once we've set sail, we have seven complete sea days, which gives us plenty of time to explore the ship.
After seven days at sea, including a minor diversion towards Ponta Delgada for a medical evacuation, we arrive in Santa Cruz de Tenerife, the Canary Islands. There's a free port shuttle to the dock gates, and from there we just went for a stroll round town. The Angel of Victory monument was designed to celebrate General Franco, who launched his coup from the Canary Islands in 1936. Walking round town, we thought it seemed a little more run down than on our previous visits. Plenty of pavement cafes though, and we found a very nice ice cream at this one. Back to the waterfront for our return to the ship. Overnight, we sailed to Funchal, Madeira. The Freeport shuttle leaves us by the waterfront on the edge of town, where there were a couple of nice looking cafes and we stopped for a simple lunch. The sea defences have been colonised by tiny crabs. We have to cross the main road to start our walk through the old town. The Alfandega is the customs house. Some shopping was done in these narrow streets. Funchal Cathedral was built around the year 1500 and is one of the oldest buildings in the city. Opposite the cathedral is a shop which sells tins of sardines and many different varieties. Back across the main road to the place where we pick up the shuttle bus and return to the ship. There's another sea day before we arrive in Malaga, which will be our last port of call before disembarking in Barcelona. We're on a ship's tour, which takes us first to a viewpoint above the city. Then down into the city centre. The far corner of the building on the right is where Pablo Picasso was born. The monument in the centre of the square commemorates those who died in a failed uprising against the absolute monarchy in 1831. The remains of the Roman theatre and behind it the Alcazaba, originally a Moorish fort taken over by the Christians but almost completely rebuilt to its present state in the 1930s. We decided not to walk up to the top 
but to have a pleasant little lunch here just opposite. Then the tour resumes with a walk towards the cathedral. It took 250 years to build the cathedral from the early 16th to the late 18th centuries. It is built in the Renaissance style with some Rococo elements. Our excellent guide was an art historian originally from Oslo. The carved wooden choir stalls are considered to be amongst the best in Spain. The magnificent main facade. Back on board for one final sea day before disembarkation in Barcelona. <laughs>